Good morning everyone, how is it going today? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to this new video tutorial. Um, here we're going to be seeing how to deploy pretty much any of the applications that we have been building here in the channel. Uh, these are applications developed in Python and using Streamlit for the front end. So yeah, I have seen that some of you guys have been building amazing applications. You have been creating beautiful projects uh, that you have either created completely yourself from scratch or you have modified from the tutorials that we have been putting up here in the channel. So it would be a great pity if you didn't have a way to share those products with either your clients, your co-workers, your friends or your employers. Um, so by the end of this video the idea is to give you pretty much just that a way to deploy any of the applications that we have been building here for free and in a very easy way okay um, on another note we have recently opened a discord server so it is completely free and it is a way for you to participate in the community to meet really cool people and to also participate in the direction that the channel takes and have a word in about future future YouTube tutorials and also to get notifications whenever we have new free learning material. Uh, and this is also a good way for you to participate in the coming events that are coming very soon. Uh, also great opportunities for you to learn about uh, about these technologies by meeting very cool people. And also a really nice way to get friend to get um, uh, support and help if you get stuck at some tutorial or something like that. We have a private forum right here that, where you can just post your questions and the community is here to help or myself as well. Um, it's more convenient than the YouTube comments for technical questions. So yeah, I'll leave a link in the description. It's completely free and feel free to just hop in there and send me a message all right um, also so now without any further ado let's get to deploying this application that we have built in the previous video in a very simple and free way okay so let's do that Alright, so the first thing that we're going to need in order to deploy our application is we're going to have to have our code in a GitHub repository, okay? This is very simple, you just gotta go to github.com, create an account and add a new repository and push your code right here, okay? Um, something important to keep in mind when pushing your code is to have, of course, your gitignore file so that you don't push your secrets to GitHub and you don't make them public to everyone. And secondly, you're going to want to have your requirements.txt file generated. Now, what is the requirements.txt file? It's pretty simple. It's just a list of all of the dependencies that you were using when you developed your application and that your application needs to run. Okay, So everything that you installed using pip install you're going to have to add it here. So Langchain, Langchain Community, uh, Langchain OpenAI, Python.env, Streamlit. Since we're going to be deploying the application that we built in the previous video, this should not come as a surprise to you because these are exactly the dependencies that we deployed, that we required using pip install. Okay, so in case you don't have the requirements.txt file, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come right here to your to your product to your project sorry and let's see how to generate the requirements.txt right so in order to generate your requirements.txt file the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to come to our terminal right here um, and first of all we're going to want to activate our virtual environment okay i'm actually going to do this in on the site terminal like this we're exactly on the same spot chat with website project and chat with website project I'm just going to activate my my virtual environment like that there you go and now inside of here what I'm going to do is 
uh, remember that the requirements.txt file is a file that contains all of your pip installed requirements. So we're, well, a good rule of thumb is that every time you install something using pip install stream, pip install uh, whatever, uh, after installing it, so for, let's say I install, I install streamlit, a good rule of thumb is that after doing this, you're going to do, you're going to do pip freeze, then this vertical bar, and you're going to do rep and whichever dependency you installed at that point. So you're going to, you can do um, streamlit in this case, streamlit, and then double chevron requirements dot txt. And what this is going to do is it's going to append to the end of your requirements.txt file um, the dependency that you are specifying here. In this case, it is uh, streamlit. All right. So let's see. If I run this, here you have it streamlit and the right version that I am using. I already had it up here, so there is no real reason for me to add it again, but that's how you do it. Uh, just to show you exactly what is going on behind the scenes, uh, pip freeze pip freeze is actually just printing all of the dependencies that are installed in my virtual environment. Then you have then you have rep, which takes all of whatever this command returned and it filters only the lines that contain this word right here. So in our case, we're filtering only the lines that contain streamlit. And then the double chevron requirements dot txt is taking whatever this command returns and appending it to the end of requirements dot txt. So that's actually what why this went like that. Um, another way to do this, if you have already created your if you have already created your project and you don't have and you forgot to do this for every single pip requirement that you had, what you can do is you can pip install pip rex and this is going to install a command that you can call called pip rex and this is only going to work if you don't have your requirements at txt or else you will have to force it through. So I'm just going to delete it, I'm going to run pip rex and as you can see, this is going to generate my new requirements.txt with all of my dependencies. However, be a little careful when relying on piprex. You're probably going to run into some errors because it, for some reason it doesn't um, pick up every single dependency that you need. So in this case, as you can see, this is not exactly what I had before. Let me just show you the comparison. As you can see, it, it upgraded the dependencies. It added like the supposedly non-breaking patches to to all of my dependencies and it forgot to include two of them. So it forgot to include Chroma and Beautiful Soup. So my application, when, once I deploy it, it's not going to work. If I don't have Chroma and Beautiful Soup, then you will have to debug it and you'll be like, so what am I missing? And you will be like, oh, I am missing the Chroma um, package. So you're going to come back to your requirements at TXC, see that your chroma is not included, and then you're going to have to manually do pip, freeze, um, rep, etc. Okay. So, so yeah, I mean, just keep that in mind. And this is how you, um, how you generate your requirements at TXT file. So now once you have your requirements at TXT file and you have all of the other files in your GitHub, um, in your GitHub rep repository, we are ready to actually deploy this using our services. Great, so now you have your repository already set up with your requirements.txt. What we're going to do now is we're going to deploy it using a platform um, that offers this service, okay? Uh, we're going to start off with Streamlit Community Cloud which is a free service provided by the community, the Streamlit guys. Um, and it's very convenient. First of all, it is free. Second of all, it's very easy to use. 
you can have your custom subdomain, which means that you can have your application.streamly.io, which, I mean, you can always change the subdomain. Um, and you can use it with private GitHub repositories, okay? Uh, now, the limitations are that there are no custom domains, like, it will always be .streamly.io. Um, it, you can only have one private application. All of them, all of the other ones will be indexed by Google and accessed by anyone you, anyone on the internet. And also you have very limited resources. I mean, of course, since this is a free service, um, your application at some point, if you receive too many visitors, your application will shut down. And also if many visitors visit your application on Streamly, on the Streamly Community Cloud, um, if, some, if no one visits your application for a long time, they are going to shut down your application and then you will have to reboot it when someone else wants to 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 access it. So, I mean, those are the kind of limitations. And also something that's not very nice is that they don't have a paid tier. They only have a free tier, okay? So if at some point you go beyond what the free, what they can uh, do for you, they're not going to be able to sell you a, a bigger uh, package. All you have is what you you get all you, all they get all they have, so yeah I mean, but it's on the on the upside it's very easy to use and very fast. So let me just show you real quick. You're gonna go to share.streamly.io. I suggest that you continue with GitHub because we're going to be um, uh, connecting GitHub together. Um, of course, this should be the same GitHub account where you have your repository, and once you're there, you're going to get to the dashboard like this. All you have to do is create a new application. You can, and then, I mean, here, they're gonna ask you to select which repository you're going to deploy. I'm going to deploy chat with websites, which is the, the one that I was mentioning before. Um, select a branch to deploy. The main file, we're going to mention, we're going to give the path to my main file of my application, which was source.app source app.py and then here as i told you you have your custom uh, soap domain so let's say website chat with websites dot streamly dot app and here you have some advanced settings and this right here are your secrets which are of course your API keys in this sense. Now, if if you remember correctly, this application needed the OpenAI API keys. And this is pretty much the same contents that you would write in your in your .dnv file. But here is an, another format. Here is a tunnel format. So you should add the, the double quotes right there. Uh, let me just remember which uh, to add some API keys right here. Let's just create this one. And here it is. There you go. There it has my OpenAI key. And be sure to choose the exact Python version that you were using when you were developing your application. In my case, I'm going to come right here and check it. Let's say Python for version Python 3.10 is the one that I'm using. So I'm going to select that one to be sure that everything's running smoothly. And then I'm just going to click on deploy. And this is basically going to deploy my application. Um, you get a real nice animation right here. You can see all the logging happening on the side right here. And um, yeah, I'm going to pause the video for a little bit because it's probably going to take a few minutes, but I'll be back when when it's um, when it's already deployed. Okay, so actually we had a problem while we were installing the dependencies, and let me just show you. That I think this is very useful, so that you can debug this yourself as well. The thing is that here, if you if there's an error while you're deploying your application, you're going to have an error message, a warning, and then you're going to have all, all sorts of error codes. Here in this case, we have that the error is an invalid requirement. Beautiful soup for and uh, it's not working. Did you mean there is a hint as well? So I mean, there is a problem here. Let's just try to figure out what's what's going on. 
um, here. Let's just Google what's going on. So apparently there is a problem with beautiful soup. Beautiful soup. And the problems with the requirements.txt file. So let's see how to use beautiful soup for in Heroku. And this is very convenient because Heroku is pretty much the same kind of service that we're kind of that we're trying to use, but the problem with Heroku is that they don't offer a free tier anymore. So we're using alternatives to Heroku. Um, here we have that they have beautiful soup 4.9, and they have this error. And someone says that you should include BS4 itself because when we install it, we do pip install BS4, not beautiful soup. Okay, so let's see the releases 0 0.0.2. All right, so let's let's correct that. So instead of uh, first of all, let's just go back to the actual one that we're going to try to be deploying. And instead of doing that, let's do beautiful soup 0.0.2, .0 which is the latest one as of January 17. And let's just save this again. I'm just going to git add requirements. I'm going to git um, commit. I'm just going to add a very quick message right here saying that I'm committing saying that I'm committing the requirements and let's just push it back. Let's see. Yes, I am connected to GitHub, so let's just let's just push it. There you go. Now it's pushed. All right, and now that we have pushed it, here it log it saw that we had updated the application. So let's see if it's going to try to re process it. Let's see. All right, so apparently it's not doing that alone. So let's go back to sharestreamly.io to our list of applications. And here you have chat with websites and you can see that we have this error right here. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to reboot it now that we have updated the requirements.txt file. And now we can just go back and see it again and see the log again. Now I'm going to pause the video again while this loads and let's see what happens. So everything's finished, installing and loading. So now the application seems to be live here in chatwwebsites.streamly.app. Now let's just test it real quick. For this I use, I'm going to use this blog from Lama Index where they um, talk about the newest release the version 0 0.10 and of course our language model has no idea what that is. So as you remember this application pretty much allows you to talk with any website so let's see what it does. Uh, what are the latest um, the main points of the latest Llama index release? Let's see if it is able to reply. Still thinking, there you go. So the main points of the latest release, version 0 0.10, are as follows. All right, so seems to be working correctly. Everything seems okay in the application and the application is correctly deployed and it is live and anyone can access it here at chatwwebsites.streamlit.app. So there you go, that's the first deployment system that you can have. Uh, just to show you real quick if you want to edit this, you're going to have to go to settings, you can change the URL, I mean the subdomain, you can set a, this application as a private application, which means only the people that you, sh that you specify the email here are going to be able to access the application. However, you only have the right to have one private application per account. All the other ones will have to be set as public, which means that they're going to be indexed by Google and they're going to be accessible by anyone on the internet. So that's kind of a downside if you want to 
if you want to use this service. And of course, your secrets, which is where you want to keep your environment variables, which are going to be mainly your API keys and other configs. Okay, so there you go. Let's now see a second platform as a service that allows you to deploy your applications for free. The second platform as a service that I wanted to introduce to you today is render.com. Okay, now render.com is pretty much the same thing as streamlit.io. However, it allows you to deploy not only streamlit applications, but pretty much applications of any technology. Um, a good way to think about it is like a Heroku replacement. In case you're not familiar with Heroku, both Heroku and Render are platforms as a service that allow you to deploy any application you want directly from GitHub in a very simple and easy way. Uh, however, Heroku became very popular a few years ago, basically because they had a free tier that allowed students to deploy their recently developed applications and showcase them to their um, co-workers, to their employers, etc. Um, now, I think it was in 2022 that they disabled the free tier and now it is Render which has taken that, that spotlight because they do offer a very generous free tier. Uh, let me just show you real quick. They have uh, 500 minutes of free pipeline, I mean 500 free pipeline minutes and free bandwidth of 100 gigabytes which sounds pretty good. And here you can deploy your static websites and also your web services, which is what we're going to do right now. So in order to deploy your Streamlit application to render, what you're going to want to do is you're going to sign up and connect your GitHub account to, to your render uh, account. And then right here, you're going to click on new and click on new web service. You're going to select that you want to deploy from a Git repository. And here you will see a list of all of the repositories that you have allowed access to from your GitHub or your GitLab account, because you can also create an account using GitLab. Um, in my case, I have only um, access, uh, given access to these two, which is chat with websites and another one right here. But we're going to deploy the same one as we did with Streamlit Community Cloud. I'm just going to select that one right here. And let's just fill in this form. Uh, so the first thing is the name. I'm going to call it Chat with Websites. Um, then we have the branch that we want to deploy from, which is going to be master. And here is the runtime. I recommend that if you know how to use Docker and how to Dockerize your application, I recommend that you Dockerize it, create a Docker, uh, Docker file in your repository and you deploy it using a Docker runtime. However, if you don't know what Docker is and you don't know how that works, that's completely okay. Um, the Python should work pretty well for you too. Now we have the build command, which is the one that is going to be run to install all of our requirements, all of our dependencies. In our case, since we're going to be dealing with a Python application, it's going to be pip install dash r requirements txt. These are things that Streamlit Community Cloud is doing in the background. So um, that's why in Streamlit Community Cloud, you did not have to do this. And then we're going to have to add our start command. In this case, remember that in order to start to start our Streamlit application, we have to do Streamlit run, and then we add the path to our application, which if you remember correctly, it was in source app.py, like that. Okay, now a good thing to do uh, in this case is to say in which port you're going to be deploying your application. Because what Render does is it tries to scan all of the ports that you have that you have um, exposed in your internal server, and it uh, one it finds one, it exposes it. Okay, so it's usually easier. I mean, it's it's better to make it easier for them uh, by by specifying a common port, which is the port eighty. Um, let me just remember how to how to run Streamlit in a specific port. As far as I remember, it is server port like this. 
there you go. So now what we're going to want to do is add like that dash dash server dot port and then we specify 8080 that is just going to make it a little bit easier for um, the render uh, platform to detect that we're running the server the service in the port 80 and then finally we're going to have to add our environment variables in our case it's our openai key the only environment variable that we need for our application going to come get here get it here from my chat with websites application that I that I created just a moment ago. Copy this and put it right here like that. Now everything seems to be running smoothly. I click on create web service and a good thing about this as I mentioned before is that if at some point you receive this one has pretty much the same limitations as Streamlit Community Cloud. However, if at some point you receive uh, a lot of users and you need to provide a better service, it is possible to just upgrade your plan to a paid instance, and then you will be able to to serve as many users as you as you require. Okay. As you can see here, you have the log, and I'm going to pause a little bit while all of the dependencies are installed, and I'll be back in just one second. There you go. All right, just a quick note right here, just to make sure that you don't uh, cancel this before it's actually finished. As you can see here, all of the installment, all of the dependencies were installed, and everything happened correctly. It got to the step of running Streamlit run um, app.py in the server that we specified. And then you have a message saying you can now view your Streamlit application in your browser. And that's okay. That's, that means that everything's going smoothly. However, this is not true yet. Okay, This is all running inside of the container of render. And it is not. It was not deployed just yet. Now, as you can see, it detected a running service on port 8080, and now it is routing that port to an actual port that we're going to be able to access. So, as you can see, even though we had this message, if I try to open the any of this this URLs that it gave me, I'm not going to see anything because it's not live. It's not actually live yet. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to want to wait for it to actually, uh, once it has detected the port, we want to have, there you go, we want to have this message, your service is live, etc. And now you have the green flag right here saying live, and now you have your URL right here, which you can click. And now here you have your actual application that seems to be running. Let's just test it again with our Lama index blog post. Let's just paste it right here. And um, uh, it's indexing the entire post. When was the latest version of Lama index released? And our application seems to be working correctly in February 2024. Perfect. All right, so that is how to deploy on render. All right, so that is how to deploy your application, uh, your Streamlit application in two different webs, in two different uh, platforms as a service. We have seen Streamlit. Uh, Streamlit Community Cloud and Render.com. Choose whichever you prefer. Streamlit Community Cloud is a little bit easier, but it's much more uh, constrained and limited. And Render is a much more general purpose platform that will probably be much more useful if you actually plan to deploy your application to a production environment. So I hope that this was useful for you. I hope to see your applications deployed very soon. Be sure to share them to the community in the Discord server or here in the comments. And I hope you learned a lot and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.
Thank you.